Do you ever get that feeling that once a month when you log on to Twitter it feels like every time you do there's a new horrific allegation being levied against one of your favourite YouTubers? Yeah, me too. And that's exactly what this video is about. So without further ado, let's speak about why YouTubers keep being creeps. Now I feel like we should gather a few case studies for this video and of course the first one is going to be I'm Alex. For those of you who don't know who I Am Alex is, and let's be honest, there probably isn't a lot of you out there right now because of how big these allegations have gotten, but I Am Alex is a British commentary channel that makes videos that most would describe as drama. The people that Alex speak about are alleged to have done some of the worst of the worst that a human can do, and then Jojo Siwa, and these people are typically on YouTube or TikTok. And then on June 15th, can you guess what happened? Yeah, that's right! His ex-girlfriend dropped an 82-paged essay exposing every single one of his abusive behaviours towards her. And now I've got to say that wasn't exactly on my bingo card for this year, because I was actually a big fan of Alex. Now normally due to legal reasons I'd say this is alleged, but due to how much evidence Alice shared in her statement it's pretty safe to say that yeah, he did it. But I do have to mention that Alex has yet to drop his own statement so technically all of this could just be flipped on its head. It probably won't, but just take this video with a grain of salt. And just to clear something up, no I'm not going to be going through the entire statement here, I'm only going to be picking out pieces that are relevant to the video that I'm making, but if you do want to find out more about this situation then please go and have a look at one of the videos that I've left in the description that summarises this entire situation. But something to bear in mind is this isn't Alex's first rodeo with controversies, in fact he's got himself into many over the years. The main one that springs to mind is of course the Slazo situation, because due to his involvement in this situation he got himself the title of being a snake, which I can't say is actually untrue. And no, I'm not going to be going over every everything from that situation, but I would like to pull out a few key points here. These key points are being the fact that Slazo was actually a friend of Alex who he just decided to turn his back on. And the other point is that Alex helped the victim misrepresent truths about that relationship. And as I previously mentioned, ever since this happened Alex has been regarded as a snake. But now you may be wondering, well how is any of this relevant? But the reason that this is relevant is because it establishes a pattern of behaviour not only inside of Alex but also his fellow YouTubers who have been and called out over the years. And this pattern of behaviour is simply just believing that you can do and say whatever you want with no consequences because who are your audience going to believe? And of course in Alex's case they believe that they will believe him because he's a big massive internet creator or an internet sensation. And also just another thing I'd quickly like to point out is that in the videos that Alice shares quite a few of them have this theme that Alex thinks he's better than most other creators. Alex genuinely believes he's some sort of big massive YouTube mastermind and his ego is astonishingly large. What drives me mental is, I think I may have said like a hundred times to the point where it's actually really hard to follow what I'm saying because it's so flexible. I've gone, you could do this but you might be able to do that, but you might be able to do that, and you might be able to do this, and this might work but you might be able to do that, and it's all, it sounds fucking mental. I, I don't even understand how you could possibly actually follow along to it. I know, like most of my friends struggle to actually understand what I'm saying. Um, but that's why I'm a professional and you're all not. Honestly, when I first saw Alice's statement, I had no idea where to begin with this because of the sheer amount of videos, voice messages and text messages. And I still don't know where to start with this. Alex's behaviour towards Alice all throughout this statement is nothing short of abhorrent. And I want to seriously express the sheer amount of respect I have for Alice with going public with this. I genuinely cannot believe how hard that must have been. But let's get back to Alex. Alex Alex in these clips displays a massive superiority complex and this narcissistic behaviour will be a recurring theme all throughout this video. In the clip I'm about to show you, Alex again refers to himself as an internet celebrity, but he says this in a way that implies that he's better than Alice and everybody around him, including his friends. Like massive issues there. Okay. And you think you can you think you can just fucking ignore them because like well, what's the worst that can happen? Um, I don't know, uh, your boyfriend's a fucking famous internet celebrity and doesn't trust these people because he has to keep his circle small. And speaking about his friends, he also then later goes on to say that he hates every single one of them. Uh, you're making it incredibly fucking hard for me. Just like Lewis did. I fucking hate all of you. But also, during this egotistical rant of his, he manages to turn it into a way to insult Alice. Because you might not have anything to fucking lose, because your life might be down the fucking drain, but I still have quite a lot that I would like to fucking give. 
There is one thing in Alice's statement that I genuinely find quite fascinating, and that is that she speaks about the different ways that Alex could come back and try and combat her statement. In fact, if my memory served me right, there might actually be a message from Alex in this statement where he says that he will discredit her by saying something. But the fact that Alice chose to mention this inside of her written statement, it makes it feel like she knows that Alex has the capacity and ability to try and discredit her and manipulate the situation into his favour. Which if you've looked on any social media platform about this situation, we all know that he cannot come back at this very easily. But I'm very interested to see how Alex responds to all of this because most of his arguments have been taken away by Alice after she listed them in her statement. One thing to note about Alex is he's a massive advocate online about equality and essentially just not saying bad things. Which makes the clip of him saying the n-word towards Alice even more fascinating. There's also a large string of misogynistic and sexist comments towards Alice throughout this entire statement, which is something he spoke against on on YouTube. Thing about you, and this is the thing, and this is why I fucking go round and round in circles. I join cool, and when I'm getting you're talking to me, going, this is the thing. Even though now, now when it's too fucking late, you admit that you did everything fucking wrong. But when it actually matters, when you should lay down like a good fucking dog, you don't fucking do it. You fight for some reason. I don't know why you fight because you're losing. Because you end up admitting that you fucked it all up anyway. So it's just fucking weird. And I know that you're going to end up admitting that you fucked it all up. Would you like and all of this really just goes to show that you can't trust what a creator says and does online. Because it's not always the truth. However, sometimes you should trust how people present themselves online. Because sometimes people don't do a very good job of hiding their behaviours. And this is where the next creator comes into play. Enter Wilbur Soot. Wilbur Soot, or as he's now known on TikTok, the Brighton Biter, which is both a hilarious nickname and a very concise way of representing what he's done. Wilbur Soot is a massive online creator in the Minecraft space, and I'm sure I don't need to introduce who he is. But for the sake of storytelling, I'm going to give you a little explanation about him. Wilbur Soot, in 2020, decided to join the Dream SMP, and just like nearly all of his collaborators on that project, he grew an incredibly parasocial audience. The foundation of this incredibly parasocial community then led to a thriving music career for his new band Lovejoy. During 2020, Wilbur was actually one of the major creators that I watched during the resurgence of Minecraft. And even after I left the community a few years later when all the allegations were coming out about Dream and all of his comrades, I seriously believed that Wilbur was one of the good ones. So when Shelby Grace, or as she's known online as Shubble, decided to go live on Twitch and speak about her experiences with her abusive ex-partner, it didn't take long for the internet to figure out she was speaking about Wilbur. And suffice to say, even though a lot of people hadn't watched him in a very long time, a lot of people were truly devastated by the news. In the aftermath of this stream and Twitter figuring out who it was, even though Shelby didn't directly say who it was, Wilbur still decided to create a statement, which most people found, um, unsatisfactory to say the least. I mean, for God's sake, even Dream was calling him out for how bad this response was. And that's when you know you've done it wrong. And after Wilbur's response that I can only describe as being disgustingly self-centered, Shelby decided to reply to this statement on Twitter, and it's safe to say it gained her a lot more backlash from his fans. Because as I mentioned previously, Wilbur has an incredibly parasocial audience who believes that he can't do anything wrong. Wilbur's audience genuinely didn't want to believe that their internet soft boy woman defender was actually an abuser. I fucking hate that sentence so much. Fucking who wrote this shit? And this again is where arrogance and egotism comes into play. Wilbur most likely believed that no matter what he said in his statement, his fans would defend him and believe him over Shelby any day of the week. And I can't say that he was entirely wrong, but there was a subsection of his audience that was big enough to be able to go through with the cancellation of him. However, the other side of his community that still believed that he did nothing wrong then went on to say that Shelby was doing it for clout. And what I find interesting about this situation is that this isn't the first time that one of Wilbur's exes or friends had come out about his abuse. In fact, there were actually a couple of clips from a few of Nia Chu's streams where she spoke about Wilbur biting her in a half-joking way. But upon reflection, was that a warning? The really fascinating thing about one of those clips where Nikki speaks about this is Wilbur actually told her to speak about it in one of them. Tell me about how awful I am to you. To me? Yeah. He keeps biting me. Yeah. 
Just to clarify, as of recording, I still don't exactly have the dates of which these streams took place is because they were from a really long time ago and weren't really well documented, but if I find them while doing the editing for this video, then I'll be sure to put them on screen now. And this is what I meant by not all creators try to hide their horrendous behaviours. But what I want you to take away from this section is that big internet creators know the power they have and they know how easy it is to manipulate situations into their favour. And these two case studies are only the tip of the iceberg. This has been going on for years on the platform. It's just become more apparent over the past few. And also, if you want to know any of the deeper details of any of these situations, then feel free to check out any of the videos I have linked in the description specifically about those topics. However, I will give you fair warning that a lot of the deeper details are incredibly hard to stomach in a lot of these situations. Even for me, who's never been affected by any of these topics, it was still gut-wrenching to read. So please check them out at your own discretion. But now I think it's time that we talk about the theory, aka the entire reason you're watching this video. So let's do that. So now we have to answer the question, well, why does this keep happening? Well, that's a really complicated question, but from everything that I've seen from being a spectator in the YouTube commentary scene for the countless amounts of years, please send help. The reason I believe this keeps happening is because deeply flawed individuals are going unchecked while they're growing and then they get to a position of power that then they begin to abuse. Big creators are not oblivious to the amount of control and respect that they have over their audience. Hell, it's the entire reason that we have companies sponsoring YouTubers on this site is because the companies know that the audience of YouTubers is incredibly trusting of them and they know it can lead to an increase in revenue. But that is an entirely separate discussion for another video. And believe me, I have a lot to say on that. But by no means is this the only reason that this happens and honestly I don't really feel like it's my place to theorize about why people have certain behaviors because I am not a trained psychologist. And obviously no matter how hard Twitter will try to get you to believe it, we cannot control how others behave. But what we can do is notice is signs of concerning behavior that come early on. And so when we witness those behaviors, we challenge creators on them. Most of the YouTubers who get called out for doing incredibly heinous stuff haven't exactly been subtle in the past about the fact that they might be deeply flawed. Specifically in the I Am Alex situation and Lewis Buckingham situation, which we didn't speak about, but that's an entirely different mess for a different day. There are clips of these two saying incredibly out of order stuff that we used to think was funny. Good thing to say to someone. <laughs> if you fear me, call the fucking police. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking bash your fucking head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the fuck up. But now with the context that we have after we know what they did, it's a tiny bit concerning the fact that we find this shit funny. And it is really safe to say that a lot of those clips did not age well. Alright, I just thought she was randomly knocking on the student's house. Oh, so when I pick up students it's get wrong. In. But when she does it, that's fine. Alright, snapshot. <laughs> this is a very complicated subject matter, but what I want you to remember is that every single one of the creators who has been called out for abusing their connection with their audience have most likely done so because of a sense of superiority. I can't exactly say that definitively for every single one of them, but specifically for a few of them, I can say that's definitely the case because they've outwardly said it. And we've seen this time and time again with Minilad, James Charles, Lion Maker, I Am Alex, Wilbur Soot, Dream, and the list just keeps going on and on and on. And and it probably will never stop. I genuinely believe that creators who have a big platform need to be reminded of the fact that they are not better than anybody else, or that they're even better than anybody else at what they do. There are obviously some people who are incredibly good at what they do, and they deserve to have a tiny bit of an ego about it. But when you become an egocentric dickhead, yeah, you should probably whack that in. At the end of the day, we are all humans, and none of us are better than the others. Okay, sometimes that's untrue. If you're a Minecraft user, YouTuber or a Minecraft streamer, you're the scum of the earth and you know it. Now, what is the life lesson of this video? Well, honestly, all of this video is just about that if you see a concerning behavior early on inside of a creator, that you challenge them on it. But if you're gonna call somebody out in the comment section, make sure you're doing it constructively and actually over a good reason and not just because you're offended by a dumb joke. But however, if you are worried about a joke that you feel personally offended by in a creator's piece of content, don't worry, most of the actually bad jokes were cut out in the edit because God knows if anybody saw the real jokes that we say on camera, we'd all be screwed. But yeah, if you're gonna call out a creator in their own comment section, be constructive about it because otherwise it's just not gonna make any difference. And so for today, 
that's all I've got. And also, if you've got to this point in the video, then odds on you really like the content. So please be sure to subscribe as I've got a lot more videos just like this coming out soon. When I say soon, I might mean in a month or two because these videos take an incredibly long time. I have refilmed this footage about five different times. It's really hard. <laughs> but yeah, no, in all seriousness, if you have enjoyed this video and want to see more like it and want to support the channel, then please do subscribe. Thank you for watching.